Hi guys, it is once again a gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise along the banks of Baker Lake, Washington on this gorgeous late summer day, September 20th, 2017. One more day in the famous summer of 2017. So I just finished my weekly last summer 2017 edition of my climate change meltdown roundup rant which i encourage you to go here and this story i just mentioned in that roundup because this story i honestly believe i, I cannot think of another story or article not story an article uh that has done a better job of encapsulating in one essay, the bottom line of why we are so fucked, and not surprisingly, coming from my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, that vegan father of four, father of four, Chris Hedges. Chris Hedges, you know, leave it to Chris. You know, the guy is unbelievable. He can sit there, you know, Chris and I are about the same age. We have about the same level of education. Why can't I do what Chris Hedges does? Uh, so in this article simply titled this, his truth dig, his weekly uh, rant and truth dig, he simply calls it uh, the Great Flood. And this is Chris Hedges reading the handwriting on the wall about these hurricanes, not even including Maria. This is after uh, Harvey and Irma drawing the obvious dots between the obvious dots between climate change and these hurricanes and everything else going on on this planet. And looking ahead, what the fuck does it all mean? It is the most articulate, eloquent, spot-on analysis of what we are facing on this planet uh, heading into the 20th century of anything I have ever read. And so I encourage you, I'm going to put the link on here. If you have not read The Great Flood by Chris Hedges, or if you've only read it one time, you need to read it yourself. Send this link around to every single human being on this planet you know. Uh, but if you just want to sit around and listen to some dumb old eco-Nazi sitting in a chair in paradise, I will sit here and read it for you. Now, of course, there is always the danger that uh, my batteries will give out either on my computer or on my camera. If that happens, uh, you will just have to uh, go on the link yourself, which is what I encourage you to do anyway. Okay, I'm going to set the little dog aside and we are going to dive in let Chris Hedges take over to explain to any clueless fucking moron on planet Earth who does not understand why we are so fucked. The Great Flood by Chris Hedges. <clears throat> Starting out with some questions. How many times will we rebuild Florida's cities, Houston, coastal New Jersey, New Orleans, and other population centers ravaged by storms lethally intensified by global warming? At what point surveying the devastation and knowing more is inevitable, will we walk away leaving behind vast coastal dead zones? Will we retreat even further into magical thinking to cope with the fury that we have unleashed from the natural world? Or will we respond rationally and radically alter our relationship to this earth that gives us life? Civilizations over the past 6,000 years have unfailingly squandered their fu futures through acts of colossal stupidity and hubris. We are probably, probably not 
an exception. Do you think so, Chris? Probably not. The physical ruins of these empires, including the Mesopotamian, Roman, Mayan, and Indus, litter the earth. They elevated, during acute distress, inept and corrupt leaders who channeled anger, fear, and dwindling resources into self-defeating wars and vast building projects. The ruling oligarchs, driven by greed and hedonism, retreated into their privileged compounds, the Forbidden City, Versailles, and hoarded wealth as their populations endured mounting misery and poverty. The worse it got, the more the people lied to themselves, and, there, and the more they wanted to be lied to. Reality was too painful to confront. They retreated into what anthropologists call crisis cults, which promised the return of the lost world through magical beliefs. Can you say, make America great again? Can you say, 1984 playing out in 2017. This is philosopher and psychologist William James wrote, quote, The most significant characteristic of modern civilization is the sacrifice of the future for the present, and all the power of science has been prostituted for this purpose. Oh, shit, sure. <clears throat> Back to Chris. We are entering the final, this final phase of our civilization, one in which we are slashing the budgets of the very agencies that are vital to prepare for the devastation ahead. The National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, the Federal Emergency Management Administration, and the Environmental Agency, along with programs at NASA dealing with climate change. Hurricane after hurricane, monster storm after monster storm, flood after flood, wildfire after wildfire, yes, drought after drought will gradually cripple the empire, draining its wealth and resources and creating swaths of territory defined by lawlessness and squalor. These dead zones will obliterate not only commercial and residential life, but also military assets. As Jeff Goodell points out in his book, The Water Will Come, Rising Seas, Sinking Cities, and Remaking of the Civilized World, quote, The Pentagon manages a global real estate portfolio that includes over 55,000 facilities and 28 million acres of land, virtually all of it will be impacted by climate change in some way. Close quote. Back to Chris. As this column is being written, three key military facilities in Florida are now evacuated. The Miami area headquarters of the U.S. Southern Command, which oversees military operations in the Caribbean and Latin America. The U.S. Central Command in Tampa, in charge of overseas operations in the Middle East and Southwest Asia, and the Naval Air Station in Key West. There will soon come a day <clears throat> when obliteration of infrastructure will prohibit military operations from returning, 
add to the list of endangered military installations, Eglin Air Force Base in the Florida Panhandle, the U.S. Missile Base in the Marshall Islands, the U.S. Naval Base on Diego Garcia, and numerous other military sites in coastal areas, and it becomes painfully clear that the existential peril facing the empire is not the Middle East, but in the seas and the skies. There are 128 U.S. military installations at risk today from rising sea levels, including Navy, Air Force, Marine, and Army facilities in Virginia. Giant vertical rulers dot the highway outside the Norfolk Naval Base to allow motorists to determine if the water is too deep to drive through. In two decades, maybe less, the main road to the base will be impassable at high tide daily. Cities across the globe, including London, Shanghai, Rio de Janeiro, Mumbai, Lagos, Copenhagen, New Orleans, San Francisco, Savannah, Georgia, New York City, all will become modern-day versions of Atlantis, along with entire countries such as Bangladesh and the Marshall Islands and large parts of New Zealand and Australia. There are 90 coastal cities in the U.S. that endure chronic flooding, a number that is expected to double in the next 20 years. National economies will go into tailspins as wider and wider parts of the globe suffer catastrophic systems breakdown. Central authority and basic services will increasingly be non-existent. Hundreds of millions of people desperate for food, water, and security will become climate refugees. I think we're up to 41 million in Asia today. Nuclear power plants, including Turkey Point, which is on the edge of Biscayne Bay, south of Miami, will face meltdowns, such as the accident that occurred in the Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan after it was destroyed by an earthquake and tsunami. These plants will spew radioactive waste into the sea and air, exacerbated by disintegration of the polar ice caps. The catastrophes will be too overwhelming to manage. We will enter what James Howard Kunstler calls the long emergency, and when that happens, our experiment in civilization might approach an end. Going back to this Jeff Goodell book, <clears throat> quote, the amount of real estate at risk in New York alone is mind-boggling. 72,000 buildings worth over $129 billion stand in flood zones today, with thousands more buildings at risk with each foot of sea level rise. In addition, New York has a lot of industrial waterfront where toxic materials and poor communities live in close proximity, as well as a huge amount of underground infrastructure, subways, tunnels, electrical systems. Finally, New York is a sea level rise hotspot because of changes in ocean dynamics, as well as the fact that the ground beneath the city is sinking as the continent recovers from the last ice age, sea seas are now rising about 50% faster in the New York area than the global average. Close quote. <clears throat> Back to Chris. A society in crisis flees to the reassuring embrace of con artists and charlatans. Critics who ring alarm bells are condemned as pessimists who offer no hope. Puts that in, in quotation marks. Who offer no hope. 
the drug that keeps a doomed population passive. The current administration, which removed Barack Obama's climate action plan from the White House website as soon as Donald Trump took office and the Republican Party are filled with happy climate deniers. They have adopted a response to climate change similar to that of the Virginia legislature ban discussion of climate change and replace the term with the less ominous recurrent flooding. This denial of reality, when also employed by those who assure us we can adapt is driven by fossil fuel and animal agriculture industries that along with the rich the the rich and corporations fund the political campaigns of elected officials they fear that a rational effective response to climate change will impede their profits our corporate media our corporate media dependent on advertising dollars contributes to the conspiracy of silence it ignores the patterns and effects of climate change focusing instead on feel-good stories about heroic rescues or dramatic coverage of flooded city centers and storm refugee caravans fleeing up the coast of Florida. <clears throat> Droughts, floods, famine, and disease will eventually see the collapse of social cohesion in large parts of the globe, including U.S. coastal areas. The insecurity, hunger, and desperation among the dispossessed of the earth will give rise to ad hoc militias, crime, and increased acts of terrorism. The Pentagon report titled An Abrupt Climate change scenario and its implications for United States security is blunt. Quote, disruption and conflict will be endemic features of life, the Pentagon grimly concludes, as I, our commander-in-chief completely denies. But, as Goodell points out, quote, in today's political climate, open discussion of the security risk of climate change is viewed as practically treasonous. Close quote. When in 2014, then Secretary of State John Kerry called climate change, quote, perhaps the world's most fearsome weapon of mass destruction, close quote, and compared it to the effects of terrorism, epidemics and poverty, the right-wing trolls from John McCain to Newt Gingrich went into a frenzy. Gingrich called for Kerry's resignation because, quote, a delusional Secretary of State is dangerous to our safety, close quote. And now, of course, instead of John Kerry, we have Rex Tillerson, uh, uh, as our Secretary of State. James Woolsey, the former head of the CIA, wrote in a climate change report for the Pentagon titled, The Age of Consequences, the Foreign Policy National Security Implications of Global Climate Change. Quote, this is James Woolsey, quote, if Americans have difficulty reaching a reasonable compromise on immigration legislation today, consider 
what such a debate would be like if we were struggling to resettle millions of our own citizens driven by high waters from the Gulf of Mexico, South Florida, and much of the East Coast reaching nearly to New England, even as we witnessed the northward migration of large populations from Latin America and the Caribbean. Such migration, these climate refugees, will likely be one of the Western Hemisphere's early social consequences of climate change and sea level rise of these orders of magnitude. Issues deriving from inundation of a large amount of our own territory together with migration towards our borders by millions of our hungry and thirsty southern neighbors are likely to dominate U.S. security and humanitarian concerns. Globally as well, populations will migrate from increasingly hot and dry climates to the more temperate ones, close quote. Can you say the sub-Saharan Africans getting their doot asses to Honkyville? Back to Chris. We, meaning here in the U.S. and pretty much everywhere on the planet, we will react like most patients with a terminal disease as they struggle to confront their imminent mortality. The gradual diminishing of space, perception, and strength will weaken our capacity to absorb reality. The end will be too horrible to contemplate. The tangible signs of our demise will be obvious, but this will only accelerate our retreat into delusional thinking. We will believe ever more fervently that the secular gods of science and technology will save us. Talking about the techno-utopians. As Goodell writes, quote, People will notice higher tides that roll in more and more frequently. Water will pool longer in streets and parking lots. Trees will turn brown and die as they suck up salt water. Close quote. <clears throat> we will, back to Chris, we will retreat to higher ground cover our roofs with solar panels, finally stop using plastic, and go vegan, says the vegan Chris uh, Hedges, but it will be too late. It already is too late, Mr. Vegan Father of Four. As Goodell writes, quote, even in rich neighborhoods, abandoned houses will linger like ghosts, filling with feral cats and other refugees looking for their own higher ground, close quote. Back to Chris, the water will continue to rise. Going back to Goodell, quote, it will have, the water, will have a metallic sheen and will smell bad. Kids will get strange rashes and fevers. More people will leave low areas. Seawalls will crumble. In a few decades, low-lying neighborhoods will be knee-deep. Wooden houses will collapse into a sea of soda bottles, laundry detergent jugs, and plastic toothbrushes. Human bones floated out of caskets will become a common sight. Treasure hunters will kayak in using small robotic submarines to search for coins and jewelry. 
modern office buildings and condo towers will lean as salt water corrodes the concrete foundation and eats away at the structural beams. Fish will school in the classrooms. Oysters will grow on submerged light poles. Religious leaders will blame the sinners for the drowning of the city, close quote. That's exactly who's to blame for the drowning of the city, Mr. Goodell. It's the sinners. Every fucking one of us. Anyway, winding up his rant, back to Chris. The damage suffered by Houston, Tampa, and Miami is not an anomaly. It is the beginning of the end. Ask not for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. It tolls for every one of us. And thank you, Chris Hedges and uh, Mr. Goodell and Mr. Woolsey and anybody else with a brain for explaining to any clueless fucking moron on this planet who fails to understand why climate change and <clears throat> Mr. Father of Four, Chris Hedges, overpopulation and all the rest mean the end of the empire and more importantly we are so fucked and with that I'm going to wrap up this uh, little rant and because uh, I have a factory farmed dead pig waiting about 40 feet from me who needs to be heated up with some fracked propane before I get in my gas sucking truck so I can go upload this video on uh, on to the internet using power created by a hydro power dam which buried this uh, mountain canyon into a goddamn reservoir. So that is what's on my agenda this afternoon. What is on yours? Bye guys.